Hello everyone, welcome to the AI practical series. In this particular session, we will study about the feed forward backward propagation neural network. I have divided the session into two parts. The first is the explanation of the feed forward neural network. And the second is the Python implementation, execution and explanation of the code. So what exactly is a feed forward backward uh, propagation, ba back propagation neural network? So this is the diagram or uh, simple diagram of a neural network. So it has an input layer. So this is the input layer. And then we have the hidden layer. And then we have the output layer. This is how it looks like. And uh, this uh, layer, th the, the layers, they are connected with the, the edges, which are also called as the weights. So this is how we represent a uh, neural network. It has an input layer. So we apply the inputs at this end. And this are propagated further. And here we get the output. So uh, this uh, some let us see some theory part about this so a feed forward neural network with a back propagation is a type of a neural network uh, using which it uses a training algorithm which is called as back propagation now what are we doing with this training we update the weights as the this particular uh, neural network learns so as we turn on the algorithm it just updates the weight until it settles down to a particular value now this particular uh, neural network, it has a feed feed forward structure as I've shown in the previous uh, slide. It has uh, three layers actually, an input layer, and then can be one or more hidden layer, and then we have the output layer. So information flows from uh, input layer to the hidden, from hidden to the output layer. Then uh, we have the neurons as we have seen the circle that that was a neuron, and we have some call something called as the activation function. So when the input flows through the various layers and, and comes to the output layer, uh, we apply the activation function to get the exact output. So co some of the common activation functions which we use is the sigmoid function. In, in our case, we'll be using the sigmoid function. Then we also have the hyperbolic tangent function and rectified linear unit. So there are the various types. And as we know, uh, this linear networks they contain weights and biases. So the connections between the neurons, they are associated with weights. Now this weights, they determine the strength of the connections. And when we train the network, the weights, they are changing. And when the, when the algorithm is complete, we get the final value of the weights. Then each neuron, it has a bias term. Okay. Then uh, we use back propagation in this particular case, the feed forward as, as the no name suggests. So back propagation is an optimization algorithm to train the feed forward neural network. So in this case, this feed forward is uh, we, we do we use it for uh, supervised learning. So in supervised learning, we have some data we, we can we use that data to train the network. And this is the back propagation is used to optimize the algorithm. And uh, of course, here we have the training data. So we have some labeled data. And through the label data, in the label data, we have the set of input and we have the target. So we train the network so that the required target, we get the required target. And while we, we just, uh, when the learning is going on, the weights are adjusted. Sorry. In, in our case, we'll be using the XOR operation in, in this particular program, the Python code we, which we are writing. We will implement the... Uh, XOR operation so in XOR operation we have these two inputs so 0 0 0 1 1 0 1 1 and this is the target will get 0 1 1 0 this is what, what should we get so when input is 0 0 output should be 0 when input is 0 1 we must get 1 and when his input is 1 0 we must get 1 1 1 we get must get 0 this is our target so after running we will match the target with the what output we are we, we are getting so the output should match with this target this is the Python code so we import numpy and then uh, this part of the, the of the program it, it it actually defines the sigmoid activation function uh, okay which is used for the training and then here we define the neural network class one more thing this is actually two underscores not a single underscore okay, this is two underscore and here also this is a two underscore okay so this we are, we are creating a class neural networks so uh, this class contains how we actually initialize the weights okay and then uh, we have the forward propagation okay. this this part shows the forward propagation where we, where we apply the sigmoid function and then we also have the backward 
uh, propagation where we apply the sigmoid, the derivative of the sigmoid function, and we update the weights accordingly. And uh, because this is a, a supervised learning algorithm, so we have this train set. Okay, so we give the inputs, we train the network, and here we get the predictions. So it returns the predictions, and then this is the training set is with this zero 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 one one zero and one one, and the expected output was zero 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 one is one one zero is one and one one is zero. Uh, so input size here we create and train the neural network with this. So epochs are the times the it will run. Okay, and the learning rate we are setting it to zero point one. The input uh, size is two. Hidden size is four, and the output size is one. So two input neural uh, at the two two inputs. Then we have the four hidden neural networks, four hidden uh, neurons, and well, there is one at the output. And here this is the training network. Okay, and it will return after running this. We we get the output. We get the predicted outputs. Of course, they must they must match this particular value. So now let us run the program. We will be using Google Colab to run the code, and then. Uh, We'll explain uh, uh, the entire code. So we are now into the Google Colab. I'll just click. On, I'll just cancel this out, and I'll click on code, and I've copied the code. I'll just paste the code here. So this is the required code. I'll share the code in the description section of this video. You can uh, copy it from there. So this is the required code. Now we will run the code, and let us see what output we are getting. So I'll just click here. So it will give us the output. So this is the output. Okay, this is the output. I have used the Google Colab. You can even run this program on Python IDE. The same code will. Run. Okay. So here for input zero zero, the predicted output is zero point one zero, which is almost e equivalent to the target. Target was zero, and we are getting zero point one, which is very much close. And for input zero one, the prediction is zero point nine. Which is almost equivalent to one, which is the target, and for input one zero, we are getting output as zero point nine, and the output which we the target is actually one, and for input one one, the prediction, uh, the predicted output zero point zero, which is zero uh, six zero point zero six, but uh, even the target which we are we should uh, we which is uh, we should be achieve is zero, so it is almost all the four we they are matching, so this is how we. Actually, implement the XOR function using the neural network. Now, I explain the code. This line imports the NumPy library, which is used for numerical operations and array handling. These functions define the sigmoid activation function and its derivative. The sigmoid function is commonly used in neural networks to introduce nonlinearity into the model. Here. A Python class called Neural Network is defined to encapsulate the Neural Network model. This is the constructor of the Neural Network class, which initializes the Neural Network with specified input, hidden, and output layer sizes. It also initializes the weights for the input to hidden and hidden to output connections with random values. The forward method performs forward propagation through the network. It takes the input data as an argument. This line calculates the input to the hidden layer by performing a dot product between the input data and the weights connecting the input layer to the hidden layer. The input to the hidden layer is passed through the sigmoid activation function to produce the hidden layer's output. This line calculates the input to the output layer by performing a dot product between the hidden layer's output and the weights connecting the hidden layer to the output layer. The input to the output layer is passed through the sigmoid activation function to produce the predicted output of the neural network. The method returns the predicted output. The backward method performs back propagation to update the network's weights. It takes the input data, target output, and learning rate as arguments. This line calculates the error by subtracting the target output from the predicted output. The error is used to calculate the delta that is the gradient of the output layer, which is the element wise product of the error and the derivative of the sigmoid function. The delta of the output layer is propagated backward through the network by calculating the error of the hidden layer, which is the dot product between the delta of the output layer and the transpose of the weights connecting the hidden layer to the output layer. The delta of the hidden layer is calculated using the same element-wise multiplication technique as for the output layer. 
This line updates the weights connecting the hidden layer to the output layer. It computes the outer product between the hidden layer's output and the delta of the output layer, and then scales it by the learning rate. Similarly, this line updates the weights connecting the input layer to the hidden layer using the input data and the delta of the hidden layer. The train method trains the neural network using the specified training data, target outputs, number of epochs, and learning rate. This loop iterates through the training process for a specified number of epochs. Another loop iterates through the training data samples. The current input data sample is extracted. The corresponding target output for the input sample is extracted. The forward method is called to perform forward propagation and obtain the predicted output. The backward method is called to perform back propagation and update the network's weights based on the error and learning rate. The predict method is used to make predictions with the trained network. It takes input data as an argument. It calls the forward method to perform forward propagation and returns the predicted output. The, the rest of the code defines the XER dataset, creates an instance of the neural network class, trains the network on the XER data and prints the input and predicted output pairs. That's all for this session. Thanks for watching. Like, share and subscribe. Share your comment.